Hello folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Beauty Counter. We're revisiting Beauty Counter here on my channel. If this is my first video that you're watching, I will get to my history with Beauty Counter because I do think that I have a unique, somewhat unique perspective on it. But the main reason that this is important to even talk about right now is that I'm sure a lot of you have noticed because you've been tagging me in the posts, Ulta is carrying Beauty Counter now. They're trying to broaden their clean beauty base, provide more options. That's, you know, what they're saying, essentially, I'm paraphrasing. And you might be familiar with Beauty Counter because they did also have a brief stint at Sephora a few years ago. They've also been carried on Goop in the past. I am not sure if they still are, but they are considered a very luxurious, conscious, fighting for legislative progress in clean beauty kind of company that sets itself apart in X, Y, and Z different ways that I will get to. But the main thing that gives us pause, right, is that it is an MLM. It is a multi-level marketing company. No matter what people say, it's synonymous with pyramid scheme. Today we're going to talk about not just my history with Beauty Counter, but my thoughts on this collaboration or this new partnership, I guess, and where the blurry lines actually become very clear for me. So I will go ahead and say out of the gate before we even jump into the video, I'm very anti-MLM and if you're coming from like their subreddit to just like flame me in my comments, you're just gonna get hidden or <laughs> or my commenters are going to have a f absolute field day with you. So it's your choice how you wanna handle it. But that said, y'all, let's go ahead and jump in. So I thought it was pertinent. I'm not gonna pull up a ton of articles here, but I thought it was pertinent to really kick off with the claims of Beauty Counter as they put them and then I think one of the most relevant reference articles, which is from Truth in Advertising. Truthinadvertising.org is a consumer rights organization and they're very biased towards the consumer in terms of like information that is often unavailable or hidden or glossed over or whatever because advertising tends to bend the truth in a lot of ways, you know, obviously in order to make more money. I am gonna start with the Beauty Counter website. I just want to read a couple of the ways that they describe themselves. One by one, we're leading a movement to a future where all beauty is clean beauty. So they were on Capitol Hill, you know, making social posts and things like that about trying to actually push forward bills and legislation in order to get certain ingredients taken out of products, more transparency around ingredients and things like that. We are powered by people and our collective mission is to get safer products into the hands of everyone. The subtext there to me is we want to set ourselves apart in terms of the ethics of things that might be a little bit too difficult for you to understand and we want our products in your hands. So, you know, buy them. Formulate, advocate, and educate. That's our motto for creating clean beauty products that truly perform while holding ourselves to unparalleled standards of safety. Why? It's really this simple. Beauty should be good for you. To me, that's kind of, I mean, obviously it's advertising. I'm not saying that like they are like sociopaths, but it's a manipulative language in the sense of wanting to make it feel kind of us versus them. It's we are a safe place for you to ask these questions about the safety of your products and we're going to make sure that you feel like we are the only place that really is like the proper resource for you to get this information, which becomes kind of a closed system, right? Especially because a lot of these things are like, you know, very complicated chemistry. And so when they're talking about these ingredients that they're trying to take out that are unsafe, it's not really a huge way to fact check that without getting like super in the weeds, which is, it's a lot easier to just accept without evidence than it is to try and kind of debunk line by line. We take safety seriously. Over 2,800 ingredients are never used in our formulations. We call this the never list. And we go above and beyond to screen every ingredient against our high standards in pursuit of clean beauty. While all of our ingredients are sourced with a higher standard of safety and quality in mind, it is well recognized and accepted by regulatory authorities around the world that incidental trace levels of a chemical may inadvertently be introduced into a cosmetic product due to the complexities of the supply chain at and, uh, and manufacturing process. At Beauty Counter, we work incredibly hard to minimize, but unfortunately cannot eliminate the potential that a product may contain trace levels of a chemical from the never list. That's mainly just like, you know, legal jargon for them to be able to kind of cover their butts in case something does get tested off the shelf and find, you know, trace amounts of something, but that they're doing the best that they can 
fine. And I think that that's kind of the territory that a lot of clean brands wade into when they do want to be this authority and this like paragon of sa safety, you know? But at the same time, it's uh, what I take issue with is the, the Never List and the 2800 ingredients, this idea that the rest of the world, well, they say that the EU bans it, but they're really just pitting against one another, like the idea of sanity versus the idea of negligence. And secretive, they do use the word, like the secretive beauty industry is, you know, not taking your safety into concern or your family's safety into concern. And it is subtle, sometimes overt, very fear-mongering language that kind of brings you into the fold and makes you a little bit afraid to go and use something else. The reality of clean beauty in a lot of cases, and this is coming from, a, you know, the reason that I have, well, one reason I have a unique perspective is that I spent the entire year of 2019 only using brands that self-identify as clean. I called it Clean Routine 2019. And I did find that the main issue was performance in a lot of cases, and then also the inconsistency around ingredients and what claims to be clean and like what that really means, because it doesn't actually have a definition, you know, an agreed upon definition. But what I concluded at the end of my year and what kind of brought me back towards really testing all brands is the fact that there's no such thing for everybody as a completely clean formula that's not going to cause any kind of irritation and a completely evil formula that's you know definitely going to cause you irritation. There are things vilifying actives, silicones, there are things vilifying you know fragrances, artificial fragrances, and also essential oils and things like that. And so a lot of times it's these clean beauty brands that are replacing and a lot you know with beauty counter as well included in this, they're replacing synthetic synthetics with natural ingredients and fewer preservatives, which in a lot of cases, for myself included, is more likely to cause irritation and sensitization to the skin, sometimes long-term, because A, you know, you can get more bacteria buildup. B, it is a higher concentration of something that your body might be sensitive to in the form of an essential oil because they are just so exponentially concentrated. And C, we're not taking into consideration the delicate nature of your microbiome. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like I switched over to so many like clean beauty products and sensitized the crap out of my skin to the point that now three years later, I, it's still not quite right. You know, I still have to use a lot of exfoliants and actives and things like that to like take down like you know, body acne and KP that I never had before then. I used to be able to use Vanilla Bean Noel from Bath and Body Works. I can't do that anymore. Like, and, and I'm not saying that it's like this, you know, crime against humanity to be into clean beauty. What I'm saying is that the word clean and the idea of eliminating all toxins and all unsafe chemicals from your products does not translate person to person, microbiome to microbiome. And it can be and often is harder on your on your skin and on your system to you know shock it like that than it is to kind of just stick with what your body already knows. So that was actually the fastest I think, the most concisely I have ever summed up Clean Routine 2019 and my thoughts on it and where I've arrived because the problem then became clean beauty became this pipeline towards radicalization, you know, and like, I'm just asking questions and like, do your own research on the internet. Mm, you know, the, the, it, it can be a slippery slope on the wrong, wrong parts of the internet. So I just kind of want to make y'all aware of that. If you're sort of new to the clean beauty industry and you get, you know, a lot of information from resources that are new to you and you feel like you're kind of having these revelations in your life, like, oh, I've been doing everything wrong. Wrong? Pump the brakes! You probably haven't been doing everything wrong, okay? That's the language they're using to try to sell their products, you know? That's that's the main thing. So that actually is like a really nice segue to the Truth in Advertising article. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> okay, if y'all can deal with croaky khaki, we're gonna continue. All right, so this is in the consumer news section and it is called The Ugly Truth About Beauty Counter. There's no concealing this makeup MLM's inappropriate income claims. This is where we're going to get into the MLM of it all, because what they do, I mean, what all MLMs do, right, is they purport their business to be a means to 
freedom, financial freedom, owning your own business. And what they really do, especially now in you know the internet age, is they try to kind of market being an MLM representative as being one in the same with being an influencer and being able to like, you know, make money off of recommending things. And it's like a fast track to being able to do that and for, you know, products that you believe in kind of thing. So to me, that's kind of the synergy is trying to kind of prey on a woman's need for community in her life or wanting to be a little bit more financially independent or wanting to have a more flexible schedule because of family and things like that they are really like focusing in on that as their target audience, as their target demographic to try and get, the, what do they call them? Like they call them brand advocates. If you want to you know, be a salesperson for them, you have to be a brand advocate. So this is the beginning of the article. Beauty Counter, a California based makeup and skincare MLM company founded in 2013, says it's leading a, mo a movement to a future where all beauty is clean beauty. And though there is currently no legal definition for clean beauty, the company defines clean beauty products, which is the only kind it says it sells, as those that are formulated without 1,800 ingredients found on its never list. I think it's been updated to 2,800. Beauty Counter also boasts that it advocates for stricter guidelines and regulations to shift the personal care industry away from using harmful and questionable ingredients. Like there's that that language, that kind of fear-mongering language of like what you can't see could be hurting you and not really having to go any further than that to prove those claims, you know? And who can argue with that? Certainly not the MLM's 4,400 plus distributors who convey similar messages of social responsibility in their own marketing materials. It's when Beauty Counter and its distributors tie such statements to the MLM's business opportunity that problems arise. This is due to the fact that the vast majority of Beauty Counter distributors are making little to no money in the venture according to the company's 2019 income disclosure statement. Unfortunately, that hasn't stopped the company and many of its distributors from making inappropriate income claims to lure new recruits into the business. A Tina.org investigation has compiled a sampling of more than 100 examples of Beauty Counter and or its distributors making atypical income claims which is across the board common in MLM culture. It really matters when you're talking about how, like who's making an actual livable income at the end of the day. Tina.org sampling includes statements made by Beauty Counter founder and CEO Greg Renfrew, who has described her company's business opportunity as its greatest product and capable of replacing income lost as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The company website states, build a better future for yourself and those you love. What's important to you? A family vacation? Paying off debt? Summer camp for your kids? You decide how much you make. It all depends on what you want to achieve. Those that lead large teams have the opportunity to earn as much as corporate executives. Boo, tomato those that lead large teams. So I'm gonna get into the structure of MLMs in a second. It's it's brief, but you know, it'll be kind of a primer in case you're not immediately familiar with it. But I personally have like a kink for learning about this stuff. If you haven't watched uh, uh, Kiki Chanel, she's fantastic as well. So according to Beauty Counter's 2019 income disclosure statement, known formally as its 2019 US Commission's Overview, new consultants spent $440 on average to enroll in the company last year. Red flag. Startup expenses include a mandatory $98 enrollment kit or $50 for a digital kit. What a bargain. A starter set of Beauty Counter skincare products ranging in price from $132 to $735 that the income disclosure statement says is optional, but the Beauty Counter website suggests is mandatory as the second step in joining the MLM and a $50 business builder renewal fee that is billed annually. I mean, they just, they got to make their money, but no, it's your job and you have, you know, all the freedom, but they're charging an average of, you know, $440 for the people just to, just to get in the door. Like that is a pro prohibitive amount of money for some people, especially if you're like looking for an income opportunity. An income opportunity is called a job, not a pay you $440. From there, Beauty Counter muddies the data by offering only the average monthly earnings of distributors. The issue with the averages, if 99 consultants make no money and one consultant earns $1 million, the average earnings for those 100 consultants is $10,000, even though the typical earnings for the consultants would be zero. Though your odds of earning a million dollars in any MLM 
um, are far worse than one in 100. Nonetheless, this much is clear from the disclosure. The typical beauty counter distributor is earning little to no money. More than 82% of distributors earn $550, $552 a year on average before deducting expenses, such as the $440 new consultants spend on average when they initially joined, which would immediately drop the average annual in earnings for most new consultants to $112 or $9.33 a month. Further, after some number crunching, 21% of consultants earned nothing in 2019, and the true figure is likely closer to 50% of consultants. This is consistent with the conclusions of a recent study which found that 74% of distributors report making no money or losing money in the MLM industry. So the reason I'm reading this is because they do a better job of explaining it than I do because, you know, they're smart and wrote an article and they're journalists and they did a lot of research. A primer, a, a quick little a quick little elevator pitch on the idea of an MLM. What really happens is, you know, they, they purport it to be this money-making opportunity where you get to make your own schedule and you get to decide how much you make. What that does is it kind of flips back on you once you sign up because then it becomes you don't make money unless you want to and then it's like this psychological manipulation of like how bad do you want it the structure of the MLM is, you know, just like any other MLM, right? Your upline makes a percentage of your sales and a percentage of your downline sales. So it behooves people to recruit more than it does to sell the products themselves. To me, when they partner with a brand, a, like a large beauty retailer like Sephora or Ulta, it is not in and of itself to me, a money-making opportunity because these products are prohibitively expensive. Just like any MLM product, they are wildly marked up because they need to be able to like make their money at the end of the day, right? They're having to take into account like all of the different like uplines and downlines and whatever and like the percentages that people might get. What they really want is actually recruitment. And so if you've been in a mall anytime in the last few years, you'll notice somebody like Casper Mattress has a storefront. And the disconnect there is that's a mail order mattress company. You're not going into the store and taking home a mattress. And then you'll see they kind of like move and you realize Casper is not making their money in those stores. Some would argue they're not making their money at all, but I digress. Those stores, even if you never walk in, like even if you're not ever consulting with someone in the store, they're billboards. They're basically using storefronts in the mall to be a giant living billboard. And that's why they kind of move around so much. So I could totally see this being a motivator for a beauty counter to be in there, to be an advertising opportunity for their name so that it becomes synonymous with a trusted brand like Sephora or a trusted brand like Ulta, not that people are actually going to go in there and buy beauty counter products. They might. They might, but they also have a membership on their website. It's something like $50 a year and you get your products at a discounted rate, which what it is is it's actually a little, a little uh, gateway, right? For you to then say, oh wait, I could get an even higher discount if I just come on as a consultant, right? But at the end of the day, you're still getting products. I'll put a picture of my face on the screen after I used their skincare for a little while because it feels fantastic at first. It really does, but I, have, I, I don't know if I've ever broken out that badly from a series of products. I don't think that the products are worth the money. The formulas are fine. The packaging is recyclable and, you know, eco-conscious and all this, you know, as much as it needs to be. And I'm not going to try and like take away from them the fact that they are innovating in terms of recyclability and things like that. The products aren't worth the money, okay? Because they've built in such an enormous margin, it can't be worth the money, you know? They can't be. Like they have such a huge margin. Those are inexpensive products to make. So, I'd like now to shift into my history with Beauty Counter. So like I said, I spent 2019 doing clean routine 2019 and only focusing on clean beauty. I had a consultant who I have absolutely no malice towards. In fact, I think she's an absolutely lovely person who offered to have me try Beauty Counter on my channel. And she would send me an entire, you know, kit of all the season's new makeup and stuff to try it. It was before there was like the big LuLaRoe 
explosion of like awareness with the documentaries and everything and kind of the more common knowledge of the predatory practices of MLMs, especially on underprivileged communities, socioeconomically, you know, lower income communities and how they go and kind of prey upon women who have like less opportunity or less education. And so there was actually a lot of interest in my comments about Beauty Counter. The videos performed really well. And so I was like, okay, well, if I want to continue using these products and kind of reviewing them for the people on my channel, because they were sold on other retailers, they were sold on Goop and things like that. So I was like, eh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of in between. People seem okay with this. Like maybe, you know what I mean? I was kind of just like going with the vibes of the comments. I was like, all right, well, I will come on as a consultant just so that I can get the products at a discount. But shortly thereafter, my face broke out like crazy and I was like, this is not a good product. But also I began to be absolutely bombed, bombed with mail, emails, text messages, just like the most anxiety inducing a little microcosm just like closed in on me of just pressure, pressure to recruit, pressure to sell. And I was just like, game over. I think I was a consultant for two days. I was like, uh-uh. And then I just, I, I was like, I'm sending this back, give me my money back. So to me, the differentiator seems to be Greg Renfro. She's done such an impressive job of becoming part of the inner circle for celebrities who are kind of wellness oriented, you know, Gwyneth, the Gwyneths of the world and all of her worshipers. People are quick to overlook the unsavory practices because she seems to have such like an elite status about her because she's obviously super rich and she dresses really bougie. And I think that a lot of people kind of as a peripheral, right? They see, they see this at Ulta, they see Beauty Counter at Ulta and they don't necessarily check right into it it's easy for it to just be kind of like, oh, I guess this is legit. It's kind of like how I had a viewer had to make me aware of the fact that the body shop is an MLM. I had no idea, no idea. Go read up on it. It is wild. I mean, they stole their entire, they stole their entire business basically from someone else. Either way, she's also done an incredible job of setting apart the brand as something that's very exclusive that people want to stand for and giving this idea of like community, I think that that's an MLM thing, right? You know, throwing the parties and stuff. But the combination of legislation and like women's empowerment, things like that, she manages to just like glaze over what lives just below the surface, which is just a really, really like unethical business model. And I do, you know, from my standpoint, want to confirm that it is still a company that it behooves you to take on a lot of your own like personal debt and to have a lot of inventory in order to be successful. It is still a business model where by definition, if you don't recruit a lot of people, you are never going to make a whole bunch of money. So it's not really about selling the products anywhere near as much as it is about recruiting people to sell products. And where the products have been absolutely wildly marked up in order to account for that, because they know that people aren't really selling that many of the products to people who really like the products, they're selling them to consultants. And so they're going to get them at a discount. They have already built that discount in with their own margin. The products cannot be that high quality, you know? And it is still a company that absolutely, like I said, bombs you with pressure to sell and recruit. So I think that like my main thesis that I wanna leave you with in this video is even if you're seeing Beauty Counter at large retailers and you're seeing them kind of be associated with these trusted brands, do not be fooled, this is still very much and unabashedly an MLM that is preying upon the insecurities of mostly women. And in spite of the kind of more glitzy appearance of it and the social connections of Greg Renfrew, it is still a really malicious business model. And they are, in my opinion, using a partnership with someone like Ulta as more of a living billboard and a way to attach themselves to a place with cachet more than they are actually trying to sell their products because with an MLM, it is never about selling the products. So that is what I would like to leave y'all with. It's not necessarily like a groundbreaking idea. It's just more about having a touch point where we, we reestablish the truth and just be like, no, this is still exactly as gross as we think that it is. 
And it's about the money. It's about the money. Because I mean, I think that that's one thing. It's like, why did Ulta do it? The money. The money. I'm sure that, you know, there's a lot of really great, like, money changing hands for all of these companies. There's always a reason and they just follow the money. I don't know the exact details of it, but I'm sure that it's about money. <laughs> so don't get tricked. Don't get roped in. The products aren't worth it. Do not become a consultant to get them cheaper. Just don't do it. There are so many better products out there for your money and the whole idea of like the safety of your products and those kinds of concerns, y'all, it is the dose that makes the poison. Go watch Lab Muffin, okay? Like, let these people crack open the world of actual like cosmetic chemistry to you because these people are brilliant. They're not out here trying to be secretive and like, oh, no, it's just complicated. It's complicated science and so when someone presents it to you as you don't know because they're keeping it from you because it's evil, that messaging probably benefits them more than it does you. So I will link the articles that I was reading from below and I invite your thoughts. I, you know, <laughs> however much you want to roast or be roasted, it's going to be a good time. So I hope y'all did enjoy this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you hated it, give it a thumbs down if that's your truth because it all counts as engagement with the algorithm. And if you'd like to subscribe, let me know if y'all want more of these kind of like deep dive informational commentary videos, because this is a lot of fun for me and I will put a video here that I think that you will enjoy. I think I'll put my Tati video here for y'all. <laughs> hey! Uh, okay, and uh, I, I wanna thank y'all for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! And I'm going to go have a lozenge. <laughs>